Hello friends, is your friend Mr. Solution. So on today's episode, we're we'll looking at guide to effective candlestick trading patterns. One of the things I've heard people say, traders say, is that candlesticks don't work. But as a matter of fact, candlestick trading is one of the profitable ways of trading the cryptocurrency market. Not just crypto, you can use it on stock trading, um, futures trading, and all of that okay so today i'm going to teach us some of the effective ways some of the effective hacks that can help you to trade profitably using the candlesticks pattern okay so let's proceed all right so in the course of this our study we're looking at basics of the candlestick we look at the big reasons why traders fail with candlesticks and how to avoid it. Then we look at a formula called the May formula. And then finally, we look at the advanced PA technique to improve your winning rate. PA actually means price analysis. Okay, All right, let's go ahead. Now the basics of the candlestick. Let's look at the morphology of the candlestick. All right, here you can see these are two candlesticks. We have the green, the red. This is the red candle, and we have the green candle. Okay, so the the each of the candle, each of the candles actually has some features to it. For instance, in this red candle, we can see this protrusion here. This is the height of it. This mean this height means that at the time there was a that that there was a time the price went as high as this extent and then there was equally a time this low the low shows there was a time the price went to this extent all right so between the between the high and the low is the body the total body okay the total body of the candlestick okay and then we have the close we have the open close open means that the the price opened at the the yes the trade actually opened at it at this very price and then after that it closed at this very price so whenever a candle is red in color okay so or rather whenever we have a bearish candle a red candle is also a bearish candle whenever we have this kind of thing it shows that the price closed lower than it opened for instance it could be that the price opened at two dollars okay it opened at two dollars and finally it closed at one dollar fifty cents or lesser okay so that's just what um, the bearish candle shows us then between the high and the clue and the this open between the high and this open of the candlestick is what we call weak some persons call it shadow okay the weak also the shadow and then this region where the price felt to felt before it was pushed up is also known as the weak that's the shadow so here now this that region that high that extends the space between the open and the high where the price was pushed up to before it went low it's called the upper week okay this is actually the upper week and this is the lower week also called shadow the same thing is applicable here you can see here that this arrow that went up from here to this very place shows that shows that there was a time the price okay the, that the price was here but then was pushed up here in other words the price closed higher than it opened it opened at this lower region then closed at this upper region showing that there was an increment in price unlike what we have here the price opened here then fell to this very region closing here okay this is actually the direct opposite of this so why this red candle is called a bearish candle this green one is called a bullish candle okay i hope that is well understood this is just the general morphology and characteristics of a candle but then i want you to understand that this is not just the only candle these two are not the only candles we have there are equally other ones other candle formations and each of those formations each of each of those formations has their names okay each of the candles each of those other candles that form has its respective names we have the we have the shitty star we have the hammer the doji and then the rest of them okay so just know that every candle this is just a general morphology and characteristics of every candle let's go ahead now i this brings us to the topic the re, that says that tells us why traders lose money with candlesticks you know it's not that the candlesticks are not efficient tools for trading but the 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 mistake many traders make is that um they trade with candlesticks in a way they are not supposed to okay so we're here we are going to be looking at the reasons why some 
traders lose money when they are using the candlesticks to trade. All right, one of the mistakes traders make while using the candlestick is that they tend to memorize the names of those candles. This is a very wrong approach. It's good to know those names, okay? But then don't just use such knowledge to help you to, um, such knowledge shouldn't be what you should base when you want to make a judgment, okay? That a single candle kind of form shouldn't be the reason why you could maybe change your buyers immediately. Maybe the market is, is actually generally bullish and then because a, a bearish engulfing candle kind of forms, you change your bias immediately to bearishness. That's a very wrong approach to it because why you don't judge the, the whole market by the formation of just one candle, right? So here you do not memorize candle, the names of candle. It's good to know them, yes, know them that this one, this is what this one is called, but then do not allow that kind of knowledge to affect your general outlook or your sentiment towards the market. We call it residual knowledge, okay? Do not allow residual knowledge to clog your mind from listening and seeing what the market is doing generally, okay? So here I said, do not memorize candlesticks, okay? So because you shouldn't memorize candlesticks, and now I've outlined the strategies that will help you to make rational decisions whenever you see candlesticks formation, right? When you see the formations of candlesticks, I've outlined here some of the steps. Uh, one, one of the steps is that you should ask yourself, where did the candle close relative to the range? Where did the candle close relative to the range? The knowledge of this will let you know who is in control, who is in control. In that market okay if you know where they can do close relative to the range it will help you to know who is in control now what do i mean let's look at this um, pictorial um, representative diagrammatic representation actually all right let's say there are two candles here this is candle a this is candle a i don't mind my drawing it's it might not really be that good it's a freehand sketch okay let's just say this could let's just um, okay this is open this is open and this is close, this is high, okay, this is high, okay, and this is low, all right, so generally knowing this, knowing this, the open, this is close, please, this is C, it looks like L, okay, so knowing this now, so what it, this in general means is that this candle is bullish, why is it bullish? It's closed higher than it's open. This is the open, this is the close. So it's a bullish candle because it's closed higher than it's opened, all right? So this is candle A. Now, this is another candle. This is candle B. Candle B, sounds like candle B. Wow, that's a good one. Candle B, candle B, candle B. That's a good one there. All right, so candle B. Okay, same, week. all right. Now this is the open and this is the close. Usually the high, the low. All right, because the candle closed higher than it opened, it's equally shows that this candle is a bullish candle. All right, but the bullishness of this one is higher than that of this. Now, here I said, where did the candle close relative to the range? Now, the whole of this from this high to this, from this high to this low is known as the range. Okay, this is the range of the candle. Same thing is applicable here. From the high to the low, everything here is known as the range. Okay, now you should ask yourself, if you look at the distance between the close here and this open, you will discover that it is actually, the distance is far apart, okay? They are quite far, far apart. Compare it to the range, okay? You can see that it is not really that close. Remember I said, where did the candle close related to the range? This is the close, okay? This is the range. You see that it's actually far apart from the open. Now, what this thing actually means is that this candle is actually more bullish than this. Comparing this one to the general range, look at the general range now. This is the open, this is the close. Check the distance between the close and the open. It's, you see that they are together. Okay, what this thing actually means that even, although this is actually a bullish candle, but you can't compare the bullishness of this very candle to this very one. Okay, this is actually more bullish than this very one. Okay, so it, what this thing means is that, yes, in this, that in this very one, bulls are in total control. But in this very one, even though, yes, bulls are in control, but that the, 
the, the BAs, that's the sellers are dominating. All right, so you should be expecting that the next scandal will form that the BAs are going to take absolute control. Okay, even if they don't take absolute control, maybe there will be a doji formation that will show that they are fighting out, they are fights logging it out over who will be the winner, over who will dominate the market. So this can, when you see this kind of candle form, you just know that um, it is not really that bullish, okay? Even though, yes, it looks bullish, but then you shouldn't be in a haste to um, become bullish immediately. Just wait till the next candle form. So that is what I mean by saying, where did the candle close relative to the range? Just lets you know who is in control. So in this, in this place now, we can see that the bears are actually taking control of the market. Unlike what we have here, the bulls are already dominating it, okay? So we can actually reverse it. We can have, um, can have the open here and then have the close here. So if this thing occurs, that means this candle is no more a bullish candle. It becomes a bearish candle because why? Because it closed lower than it opened. Okay, so automatically this is a very, very bearish candle. Now, if we still um, change position here, let's say this is open, this is closed. What it means is that this candle is still bearish, but then we can see that the bulls are dominating. Okay, the bulls are dominating. That's what this thing actually shows. So that's just the point I was trying to make when I said, we are the candle close related to the range, as this lets you know who is in control. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to wipe this as we continue. Okay, I hope this point is well understood. Let's proceed. All right, the second question you should ask yourself is what is the size of the candle relative to the earlier ones? This lets you know the strength of the move. What is the size of the candle relative to the earlier ones? This lets you know the strength of the move. What do I mean? Let's look at a chart. Let's look at the chart. Um, of, of course, we'll be using our normal exchange, FTS. So please, if you and if not, if not um, registered an account with this exchange, I would encourage you to open an account. It's one of, it's actually my favorite exchange for now. Withdrawal is free, a very good interface. Is a, the interface is very okay. It's quite user friendly. Okay, so you could actually open an account, ftx.com, and then also maybe you just want to um, celebrate me or congratulate me for putting up this video. You could just use my referral ID, that's Mr. Solution. Mr. Solution, it's just one word, even though, yes, it should be two letters, but it's, it's just one word, Mr. Solution. Everything is together. Okay, so we'll be looking at, we'll be using. Um, and be Ethereum for this, uh, for our analysis. All right, the point I mentioned was, um, if comparing the count relative to the earlier ones that form, the size of the count relative to the earlier ones that form. So what do I actually mean by that statement? Okay, all right, this is Ethereum USDT chart and we are using the um, daily time frame. All right, so what actually meant by that statement is this. Now, okay, let me look at, let me use this candle. Which one do I use now? All right, this candle, uh, I think uh, it's it's actually um, it's a good example to what I want us to understand. Now, compare the size of this candle to these very ones that have been forming. If you compare it to these earlier ones, we discover that this candle is actually more bullish, both in, 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 in length and otherwise. You see that it's actually more bullish than these very ones. So when you compare this to these other ones that are formed, what it generally what it generally tells you is that this um this is actually uh, the that the, is more of a, more or less a bullish continuation. Right, so the, that the bulls are still in control, even though yes, there was a little correction, but what happened next, the candle still kept going up. Okay, that's just one example. Let's equally look at another one. Okay, this one here, okay, comparing this candle to the earlier ones that formed, you can see that, look at the one that formed before this, and you see how it actually swallowed it up. So when you see this kind of confirmation, Okay, when you compare it to the previous one, it will just tell you that the bulls are still in control. This is quite another example. I think this is actually the perfect example of what that point is trying to say. Now, comparing this candle one, this very candle now to these other ones that from starting from here, we see that this is the largest so far. This actually how many days? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
for the past nine days, the candle that formed at the tenth on the tenth day is actually quite bigger than these previous ones that formed in the in the past nine days. So it's actually an indication that this chart is still looking more bullish. Okay, it's still looking more bullish. And what happened after the, there is a little correction, but generally the price has been going up. Okay, so that's the point I was trying to make when I said compare the candle in relation in relation to the um one the the ones that formed either. So that's the point. That's the point of this. What is the size of the card related to the earlier ones? This lets you know the strength of the move. Okay. So as we can see here now that, as you can see from this chart now that, okay, looking at this is when you compare this relative to these earlier ones that formed, the strength of the move is actually very bullish. Okay. Let me see if you can if I can see um, a bearish example that typifies this very thing now that I just talked about. Maybe a bearish can do something like that that gives an example. But please, I want you to understand something. Please um, do not take whatever you'll be learning from this class. Do not swallow it hook, line, and sinker. The essence of the class is just to open your mind to this possibility so that whenever it occurs, you can now say, yeah, you've heard something like this before. So please backtest everything. Okay, trust me enough to believe that I know what I'm doing. Okay, but then believe confined in me enough to go and verify these things I'm saying to know if it is true. So after learning, just go back to your own chat, backtest it. This actually works both for forex for us to, forms of trading. Backtest it to know if it's actually true. All right, so that's just the essence of this class. Okay, so the next point we have here is. Okay, another mistake why people, well, another reason why people feel when they use the candle stick is that they look at candles singly, okay, by not looking at candles as a group, they look at it singly. This is a very wrong approach to, to trading with the candlesticks. Why? One candle tells you a small part of the story, but then a group of candles tell you the juicy part of the story, and then a trade takes about 200 candles to change and the odds of just one candle changing the market is very small. Market structure is by far greater than candlestick patterns. What do I mean? What this point is actually trying to let us know is that there is no how one candle can change the whole structure of the a market. A candle cannot just change the trend of the market. If a market is generally bullish and then a bearish, a single bearish candle forms, a bearish engulfing or whatever bearish candle forms, it shouldn't make you to go bearish. What do I look at this very, let's to go back to the um, the Ethereum, Ethereum um, charts we are using for our analysis. Okay, now look at, if you step out of this market, discover that generally this is a bullish market because the, it's been making a series of higher highs, okay? It's been a series of higher highs all along, okay? Uh, so it's been a series of higher highs all along. So that being the case, that being knowing that the, this, the, the general structure of the market structure is bullish. Now, that being the case, what is the, what is the tendency of just this very candle, this very bearish candle that form? What is the tendency of it changing the whole structure of the market? It's near impossible, okay? So that this candle, this red candle form now shouldn't give you the, shouldn't um, give you the um, belief, okay? Or the confidence that you sh should change your bears to bearishness, okay? That's just what that point is trying to make that it's the possibility of just one candle changing the whole structure of the market is very small, okay? It's negligible, All right? So even if you, let's say we didn't extend it to that length, look at what we still have here. It's still the candle, the, the formation, the market structure is still an uptrend, still making a series of higher high, okay? So that's just what I meant by saying that you don't just read and the market structure because of just what one candle says, okay? Because it takes more than it takes more than hundred candlesticks to form a structure. So the possibility of just one candlestick changing the market structure is very small, okay? So that's for that point. And let's proceed. Okay, now how do you determine the 
the candlestick formation, okay? How, how to determine higher time frame candlestick formations. That's the next point to be considering here, okay? So I would want to use a diagram to um, illustrate that. Let me just draw two, um, two candlestick formations, all right? So let's say we hypothetically, let's just say we have two, let's just say we have two, um, um, candles okay two hour we are using two hour time frame this is candle one okay this is candle one and this is um, of course low high let's say this is open this is the open and then this is the close so automatically this is a bearish candle it's closed lower than it's open this is a candle it is bearish let's say this this is a two hour candle Okay, and then we have another two hour candle here. And then this is uh, this is the formation. This is what we have there, or something like this. Okay, and of course the high, that's the week, the upper week and the lower week. And then let's say this is the close. Okay, and this is the open. So in other words, this is actually a bullish candle because it's closed higher than it's open. But this is a bearish candle because it's closed and um, it's closed lower than it's open. Now, if you want to, if you want to get the four-hour candle, it's very possible. Okay, it's very possible. This is a, a, a technique I've tried, a trick I've tried, and it's working very well. Okay, you just want to know what will happen in the long run, in the longer time frame. Okay, so what you, what you do just to combine these two candles to know what will happen in the a longer time frame so how do i do that now generally the open of the first candle this is the open of this first candle right this is the open the open of this first candle will be the open of the higher time frame candle it will be the open of this higher time frame so we we'll have the open here okay we have the open and now the close of the second candle should be the close of the higher time frame candle okay we we'll have something like this this is close all right, this is close. Okay, so generally we'll have something like this. We'll have something like this. We'll have something like this. And then the height, the height, the highest point of the highest point between these two candles, between candle candle A and candle B. Cardi B sound like Cardi B. The the highest point between candle A and candle B should be and um, the highest points of should be the highest points of um, the higher time frame. This so we should have something like this. Okay, same thing here. The lowest points between can can do A and can do B should equally be the and um, the lowest points of the higher time frame. Sorry, maybe yeah, of the higher time frame. Don't mind this in our streets. I'm using freehand. Okay, and my mouse sometimes does some things. Okay, so this is it. We'll have something like this. Okay, so automatically, what this thing is showing me is that in four hour time, if I switch to my four hour time frame, this candle is actually bullish. You see, it's it's closed higher than it's open. So generally, this is actually a bullish candle. So what it means is that in the four hour and in four hour time for our time that this the the, the candle seed that will form is going to be a bullish candle okay so the knowledge of this now will now help you to project maybe this kind of kind of candle is forming you are not sure what will happen next okay even if you, you do not just um do, do this thing to know if you use the knowledge of what we discussed before the 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 size of the candle relative to the earlier ones you see that okay it opened and closed the, it was bearish and then this one now came you see the big ass bullish candle that form so it will just let you know that the next candle that it's from is going to be bullish okay reason what we discussed at uh, point number two All right so but then if you still want to be sure still try out this method let's look at the chart to know if we have something like that okay like i said don't just swallow whatever it is you're learning from this hook line and sink and back test it to test its um, efficiency its, its effectivity Okay, as it as it relates to you or whatever thing you're trading stocks, in this is um, um, forex, whatever commodity you it is you're trading. All right, so let's look at the chart. Okay, still on our 
still on our ethereum charts all right let's say this is this this candle was formed okay this is the candle that was formed here and which do we use right now um okay let's use this this happened 4th of july between okay 4th of fourth. okay now we are going to sh move this in from daily to we are going to move it from daily to two hours okay we are going to move it from daily to two hours let's say because we'll be using four hours as our higher time frame so let's see what the formation in two hours i know the candles will be chosen let's say we are selecting these these two candles okay we'll be selecting working with these two candles all right for us to know for us to know the candle that will form in the higher time frame okay let me use this trying to know the um four okay let's just say let's we are working with this here now okay these these are the two candles between 8th july and the okay 8th july between the um between five o'clock and seven o'clock that's like two hours okay so here you can see this one d the the this is the this is actually a bearish candle because it closed lower than it opened hence this red coloration so it's a bearish candle now where is the open of this candle remember we said the open of the first candle should be the open of the higher time frame candle so where is the open of course this is actually the open okay this is the open so we could have something like this let's say this is our open here we we'll have something like this um, I'm trying to know the right thing, the right um, that we use for this drawing. Uh, I think this this should give me what I want. Okay, yeah, I've gotten it. All right, so let me raise this. I do not need this anymore. I do not need this. Okay, this is what I want here. Okay, so this where is the candle we are comparing now where is the candle we are okay this is the candle we look at these two candles between sevens uh between these these are the two candles we've been working with now okay so that's not the candle this is the candle we are working with these two between um seven o'clock and 13 o'clock 7th july between 7 to 7 between 9 o'clock sorry and 11 o'clock that's two hours so this is the candle we are working with now to see what will happen in the higher time frame so where is the open this is a bearish candle where is the open the open is um, here this is the open so we'll have something like this we'll have something like this This is not giving me what I want. It's not giving me what I want. It's not giving me what I want. Um, no. Unfortunately, I can't really get this um, two for drawing. Can't get this two for drawing now. So it's got to be here. Can't get it right now. Oh. I used to have it here. Can't really get it. Oh. Okay, so these two candles are the ones we are comparing right now. So this is the open. This is the open. So we we'll have something like this for the higher time frame candle. Starting from here, we we'll have something like this. So it should be between here. We we'll have something like this. Uh, how straight is this? Not quite straight, anyways. Not quite straight. Okay. 
is not very straight. Okay, okay, let's just say this is actually our open, but just know that it has to be lower than this. This is our open. Now, where is our close in the second candle? This here, this is our close. We have something like this. We have something like this. Okay, this should be our close. This is our open. This is our close. Okay. So you're joining these two together. We should have something. We should have something like this. Joining the two together. We should have something like this. Okay. So the height from here to here, this is it. This should be the, the lowest point. Okay. For the height, the highest point is here. Okay, we should have something like this. Right, so it's not really um it's not very clear. It's not very clear because um I've not really I'm not really doing this the drawing well, it's not well represented. Just a uh, fictitious, you just imagine that the point I actually explained initially is what we are trying to do here. We are using the open of this of the um the open of the first candle is the open in our in our um in our higher time frame candle, and then the close of the second candle is our close in the higher time frame. Okay, so in the higher time frame. So if we if you now check it out in the four hour time frame, let's go to the four hour time frame to see what happened between this time and see the candle that formed around there. We see that we have something of this nature. Okay, let's look at what happened in the four hour time. Okay, seven. Okay. Okay, you can look at it here. You can see this is it. You can see the candle that formed. You see how it's easier and it's still a bullish candle. Okay, so that's just how you know the nature, the next candle that will form when two candles, when two lower time, when you combine two lower time frame that come. So this helps you to get clarity. If you're trading the one hour time frame, you want to know the next candle that will form in two hours. Okay, you, you simply just do this. Let's say we have one hour here. This is one hour time frame. This is one hour. This is so for you to know the next candle that will form in two hours. Just combine these two together, just as we just did. You could just draw it on your sheet or your paper or anything like that using the concept we explained. Don't mind what just happened there. You know, this is this 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 drawing was not really done accurately, but just the knowledge of what we just did has actually made you to understand the concept behind it. Okay, so let's just proceed. So um, the next point we have here is the May formula to better candlestick trade. Okay, this actually is a formula that has helped me very well whenever I am, I am trading the candlestick pattern. Okay, so what is actually the May formula? The May, the, in the, the, M, the May is an acronym. So the M stands for market structure. So before you trade with the candlestick, you should first of all ask yourself, what is the general structure of this market? Are we seeing an uptrend? Are we seeing a downtrend or is the market ranging? The, 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 the example we gave with the Ethereum charts, we saw that that's what we have is, a, is generally an uptrend. So because it's an uptrend, you shouldn't really be concerned with shorting the market. Rather, you should be looking at good positions to take a long entry. Okay, you should be looking at good entry to take a long position, okay? Looking at good entry to take long positions because generally the market is an uptrend. So whenever you see a bearish uh, a bearish candle form, it should be it should be um, it should tell you that you should be taking a good entry. Okay, you should be tell you, you should be taking a long entry. Okay, such an uptrend because generally the the formation the general out outlook of the market is is an uptrend. So the same thing happens in an uptrend too. In a downtrend, I mean, if the market is in a downtrend, you see any any position for you to long trade or whatever, just know the right um, step you should take or the right thing you should do. So first of all, trading the market, trading, trading with the candlesticks, ask yourself, what is the market structure? What is the general market structure? It will help you to know what you should be doing at any point in time. And number two, what is the area of value, okay? By area of value, area of value tells you 
um, what you should be doing. For instance, we could have the support, we have the support, we have the resistance, we have the swing low, we have the swing high, and then we have the moving average. Okay, area of value tells you where the price is at that very moment. Okay, let's look at this, uh, the same charts we've been using all along. That's the Ethereum, um, the Ethereum charts, okay? If we are using one hour, can one hour time frame. Okay, well, let me still, let's still go back to our daily time frame to know what is happening. Okay, so now if you, you can now draw your support and resistance to know the area of value where the price is at this point in time. Okay, to know where the price is at this point in time. They just say, this is our, okay, generally the market structure, this is an option. So we've already established that this is an option. Now the, the, the next A, the, the next alphabet there is A. A is area of value. Okay, when you, if you actually look at this thing now, you see that it's actually closer to the resistance than it is to the support. Okay, so the area of value here is that the price is at the resistance region. Okay, but just by me looking at it, you, you've already know that this is the price is, quite close to the uh, resistance. So our area of uh, value is that it's at, at the, it's at the resistance, okay? And then the next alphabet that we have is E, okay? The next alphabet we have there is E, okay? Now, E is for entry triggers. Okay, entry triggers actually tells you the things that will make you to enter the market, the kind of candle that will form that will make you to either enter the market or to exit the market. For here, for the bullish patterns, you could have hammer, you could have bullish engulfing and the rest of other um, bullish candlestick patterns, okay? So whenever you see this kind of bullish pattern formation, we tell you whether you should be entering the market or whether you should be exiting the market. That's for the entry triggers, okay? So bearish patterns, are we having a shooting star? Are we having a bearish engulfing, okay? So these entry triggers help you to know where, you, how you should be entering the market, okay? So that's for the E. Then the next one here is the exit strategy. Exit strategy tells you how you should be exiting the market. Recall that in one of the, um, in one of our training videos, we talked about, we said that every market will always end in four conditions. Either you have um, a big win, a big loss, a, a small win or a small loss, a small, a big win, a big loss, okay? A small loss, a big win, a big a big win, a small win, a big loss, a small loss. So every market will always end in these four conditions. A big win, a small win, a big loss, a, a small loss. So these four conditions, each of your trading must always end in either of these four. Okay, so you should ask yourself, what, where, should you, where should you be exiting this market or what condition will this market meet before you can exit it? Actually, you can actually exit in two conditions, okay? One of the conditions is, is that either you are wrong, that's, 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 let's say the price actually hits your stop loss, okay? That's for the when you are wrong. Or finally, you could exit when you are right, that's by taking profits. Maybe your analysis, you are right. So you now exit because you have hit your take profit, okay? So let's look at the charts to actually understand this thing proper. Okay, so still using our Ethereum chart, like I, like we said for the A, May, for the May market structure. So we have a bullish market structure here. Let's just note it. M, we have our M here is, um, M is bullish. M is bullish. We have a bullish market here. Is this not working? I just want us to note it. We have a bullish market here. We have a bullish market. Okay, let's just note that we have a bullish market. That's the general market structure is bullish. Okay, we have a bullish market. And then, and then the A, A is area of value. Like we said, where is, what is the area of value? Now, where is this price currently at? You will see that the price is actually at the resistance. So the area of value is R, that's the resistance. Then the next um, alphabet we have there is 
e entry triggers okay so what remember that this, remember that this is actually an 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 uptrend the general trend of this the general structure is actually an uptrend okay so entry triggers what what should be should you be doing now like what can, condition okay should this chart meet now before you can actually enter so maybe we could we could wait for um maybe uh, as we have seen here okay this is actually a sign of bearishness okay we we'll just wait for let's say if it gets to this uh, very zone now okay we could just maybe um, a, a bearish engulfing candle forms okay if a bearish engulfing candle forms you could just decide to take an entry knowing that this is actually the general structure of this market is bullish okay so that's for the um entry triggers then the exit strategy okay let's just say we've already made our trade and then this is where the price currently is at this is where the price is, is at right now so we want to know how to exit okay so you could exit under the under two conditions let's just say you took this trade now if you let's say you took this trade and then you long you long this trade and where are you supposed to be putting your stop loss of course people make the mistake of putting their stop loss immediately at the um area of value putting your stop loss for instance if you're longing this trading ideal thing to do is for you to put your stop loss at the support zone but that is a very wrong approach reason being that the support zone is where the alternative force will come to drive the market okay let's just say this let's just hypothetically say that in this chart now this is our support zone let's say this is our support zone okay you can see initially this was um this resistance has become a support so the resistance has flipped to become a support right so mm -hmm. the next if you're taking a long trade now what ideal thing to do is to put your stop loss here but that is not right Okay, it's not right because this this very region and this very zone is where alternative force, okay, alternative force will come to drive the price. That's why most people's stop loss is usually eaten up. Okay, you put a stop loss, the 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 the, the price comes and takes your stop loss and immediately it reverses. So you don't put your stop loss here. Okay, you put it a little bit below. So how do you know where to put it? That's what we call ATR. That is an actually an indi is an indicator. There's an indicator called ATR. That's average true range. Okay, so what you do with it is that. Okay, for here for here you can see that the the current value of this um, this ATR is is a nine point six eight one three. 9.6813 so to know where you should be putting your stop loss all you have to do is to deduct this area of value now okay this 2222.966 minus this very value 9.6813 remove it from this 2222 it should be giving you something around here okay should be having something around here so that's to tell you that that's to tell you that your um Just to tell you that your um, um, your stop loss should be around here. Should be putting your stop loss around. Sorry, should be putting your stop loss around this region. This is where your stop loss should be around this region. Okay, when you did the when you did the mathematics, when you did the deduction. Okay, it should be around there. Don't mind this. Okay, it should be around there. Okay, your stop loss should be around there. Don't put it here because this is where our alternative force will come to drive the market up. So don't put it here. Put it here by combining, com by combining it with your ATR average to range. So the same thing equally happens here. Let's say you are um, you are shorting the market. I mean, let's say here now, this is where the market is. Um, and then you intend to short it. You intend to short the market. If you check very well, if you check very well and ask yourself, let's say the price is already here. Assume this is just a candle we are working with. Okay, this is just a candle we are working with. And then this is a candle we are working with. And then the price is here. And then you want to short. Where is the ideal place to take your profit? Or, okay, you want to long rather. Yeah, you want to short. Okay, you want to short. Maybe you believe that the price is going to get to this very region. Now, this is the next stop of the candle. Now this is the next stop of the price, and then you want to short to this very point. If you want to put your stop loss, where are you going to put it? Of course, you'll be looking at um, the next um, resistance zone. But then, like I said, don't put it immediately at the point of resistance. 
let's say 249.63 is your resistance zone, still go to your ATR, go to the, your ATR and check where the ATR is. Currently is at 9.6813. Add it to this 249.63. If you add it up, it should be giving you something around the 2525 something. That's where you should be putting your um, stop loss. Okay, so that is it for that. And then again, let's still back data and see what happened here. Okay, let's say this person here, the person bought at this zone. Okay, he longed, he longed. I do think for him to do is to maybe put the stop loss at this region. That is right. And if you can see all through, the price never came to that region again, never came to that region again. So that's just one thing you should know about putting stop loss and where you should be equally be, you should equally be taking your profit. Okay, let's equally look at another chart. Let's say, let's um, look at BNB. Let's look at BNB. Let's look at BNB. That's BNB USDT. BNB USDT. Uh, BNB USDT. Let's look at BNB chart to see what we have there. Okay, if you can see here, here the market is more or less at this zone. It's more or less ranging at this zone. This uh, this place is be ranging here. Okay, it's be ranging here. There's really been no significant move as such. Even though if you look at the RSI, the RSI is actually bearish. They're making a series of lower lows and lower highs and all that. So it's actually a bearish market. But this region, at this zone, you see the markets has actually been ranging. Okay, so we have a bearish, let's just say generally this is actually a bearish market. Okay, so we can equally apply the same principle we learned initially to this very chart. So what is the market structure? What is the market structure? This is, is a bearish market. Okay, judging from what RSI is telling us this is a bearish market. Then where is the, what is our area of value? Where is the area of value now? Okay, area of value, current price is closer to the resistance zone. Okay, the area of value is the resistance zone. Okay, what is our entry trigger? What is our entry trigger? What should we see before we can enter the market? Okay, assuming this candle now turns, you know, this is a daily candle, so it hasn't closed, we can't conclude. Assuming this candle now, becomes bearish okay let's say it becomes a bearish engulfing okay if it becomes a bearish engulfing that means our entry trigger should be what we should be shorting or let's say we have a bullish engulfing it swallows up this one that means we should be what we should be doing what we should be longing so our entry trigger we, we decide it's here just as we have here you can see this bullish formation so our entry trigger was we should long because of this massive um um bullish candle that form so as at this point our entry trigger was what was too long because of this bullish candle okay so now what is our exit strategy what is our exit strategy are we exiting because it hit our stop loss or are we exiting because our target was met for instance if i if i was in this trade and then i longed from here of course my first target should be around here this is where i should be looking forward to taking my first profit to be honest so after here the next point should be at this very place at this very region okay but firstly i usually love to take my profit at the first target because this market you can't be too sure so if I, if I had long there, I would be taking my profit around this region, this very zone now, this very, that's where I should be taking my profit. So my profit should be that it hits my target. And then if I, if I had long from here, my, my stop loss, I would be putting it around this zone. I'll be putting it around this zone, considering my ATR to my stop loss should be around here. Okay, if I had longed it, my stop loss should be around there. Of course, if I put it there, we see that the market never touched my stop loss. It still went up, rather, it, it hit my targets. Okay, so I would have hesitated this, I would have booked my profit from here. So, this is just the knowledge of what May's formula will help you to know in the markets. Okay, so let's um, round off. So, that's for that's it for the May formula M A E E market structure area of value, entry trigger, and finally, as a strategy. All right, so these are just the bonus values for this video. 
Now, if you want to enter a trade, I don't just enter any trade I see. I don't just enter any candlestick formation I see. There are things I have to consider. One of the things I usually consider is power move into area of value. For instance, let's just say we have um, something like this. We have this kind of, okay, this is a chart now. This is a chart. Okay, this is a chart now. And you have, you, uh, I would rather I would rather enter this kind of trade. When I, if I see this kind of chart, Okay, if I see this kind of chart, okay, I think I would prefer to trade this, to take this kind of trade than let's say have something like this. I have something like this. I have something like this. Okay, I don't I don't trade this kind of thing because why? It's 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 very difficult for me to know where my area of value is. Is he here? Is he here? Is he here? Is he here? This is a bearish. This is a bearish um, candle. It's actually bearish. This is a bearish trend. Candle is making a series of high, lower low. So I want to see a big ass move. For instance, let's say we have. We probably have something like this. Let's say we have something. Like, even though it's a bearish uh, formation, we have something like this. Uh -huh. We have it again. This is the kind of charts I love to trade. Okay. I love to trade this kind of chart because I'm, I want to see a strong power move into area of value. Okay, here, you showed me that the price moved to this short um, um, support zone. It hit, it um, went below it, it broke it, and then still went down again, still broke it, then maybe tried going up and still broke it again. So I want to see a power move into area of value. Same thing happens here. Okay, you see, making a series of fire highs. I want to see a power move, unlike what is obtainable at this region. Okay, it can't just be too short. You can't say this is the next thing that will happen. So that's just one of the conditions or one of the things I look at each time I want to trade the candlestick. I want to trade a candlestick formation where there is a power move into area of value. So secondly, the next thing here is if I notice a first breakout followed by a strong price rejection, this is what I want to do. For instance, we've been, we see what BTC has been doing for some time now. It's got to 9470 and it tried touching 95. It rejected it. Now it's around 9,100 and something dollars. Okay. So that kind of, um, that kind of rejection is what I love to trade. Okay. Let's say we have the same chart. We still have a chart like this. Okay. And then normally everybody, everybody is okay let's just say we have something this is a chart but this is a chart and then price comes here breaks it okay breaks it what happens is that very many people many people will be waiting here too long so immediately they they they, they, they it breaks it maybe touches it what many, many people usually do is that they will long this trade okay but i will have to be patient and then and then if i see that the the price rejected that um, that point it rejected that um there is a price, strong price rejection because many persons have already longed so i would have to short because once you see a sharp rejection just know that it's still going to be seeing a series of um, it's market is still going to be making a series of it's still the correction will still continue so whenever i see a strong price rejection this kind of trade i want to enter if I see a strong price rejection, I have to take a short trade. The same thing equally happens. Let's say I want to, I want to um, long it. Okay, I want to long it. So persons have been shorting, and then he, he came to, he came to. Okay, let's just say we have something like this. He came to this um, price. Came to this. Let's say okay, price came to this zone, this um, support zone. He came to this support zone, and then did as if it will break it. Okay. Because as at this point, many persons, many persons will have their short short position. They will have their short positions open here. So many persons, because many persons would want to short it here. I want to go against them. And then let's say it breaks it. Then they, they might be saying the price is going to go short further. Then it gets rejected. If it gets rejected, the next thing that will happen is that the price will start keep, keep making um, a series of open. So I want to see a strong price rejection. Okay, so that's what I mean by first breakout followed by a strong price and um, rejection. That's one of the candle uh, from the candlestick formations I love to trade. And then finally, I want to okay, be setting a limit order. Be setting, be setting a limit order. What do I mean by setting a limit order? Let's say, let's go to the chart we have here. Let's go to that our uh, same um, PMB charts. Okay, daily candle formation. Now. Okay, we have something like this. Okay, yeah, we have something like this. 
yeah this is a perfect example okay now this is let's say um you know this is a resistance stone support this is a resistance that's um, stone supports right right now okay so if at this point let's say i long if i long this market where should i be putting my stop loss okay where should i be putting my stop loss okay if if you check now if i'm longing here if i'm longing here that we are we are putting my stop loss it should be something around here around here and if you check my target to where i'll be putting my stop loss it wouldn't really make much difference okay that would be the the risk to reward ratio will be very small so i want to take a trade that i have a higher risk to reward ratio so that being the case what i would have to do is to go to lower time frame i'm using daily so our my lower time frame should be four remember four to, four to six factor Okay, Alexander Elder's 46 factor. We we'll still talk about it in one of our classes. Okay, so I will now go to lower time frame. Okay, so if, if I'm going to lower time frame, the well, lower time frame will now tell me the place I'll be taking. I'll, I'll be taking my long position and equally I'll be putting my stop loss. Okay, remember this is what we were looking at before. This is um, this is resist and uh, resistance don't support. Okay, so if I'm long in here. If I'm longing at this point, if I'm longing at this point, I think my, my my stop loss should be around this zone, okay, around this zone, so that I will have a higher uptrend than a, a than a downtrend, okay. I will have a higher risk to reward ratio. So that's what the points, I that's what that point is trying to tell us by play fixing limit orders. Okay, limit order. Don't just go immediately. They put limit order, and you can only put limit order by going to your lower time frames. Okay, so that's for that point. And um, I think that should be all. And I want to thank you for making our time to go through these charts. And please, if you have not yet followed me on any of my social media channels, I would encourage you to check me out on Twitter, on Instagram, and reach out to me on whatsapp if you have anything you want me to clarify you on and thank you so much i really appreciate your time and effort that you've put towards and um, making this a success and please kindly subscribe to this channel it will serve as a form of encouragement for me to be pushing out more content thank you and i will see you in the next episode